possible before I do that, I want to thank you for letting us hold a revival here. We were a few in number, but the power that was there. We even seen a second row of Baptist get the Holy Spirit. And guess what? She's here today. She said, she said, I got the shakes and I can't stop shaking. I told her the next thing is you're going to start speaking differently. I said, I don't know if you can go back to that church you came from no more. When you start shouting and running the pews, they're going to look at you like, wait, what in the world? You had an encounter, man. You had an encounter. But I just want to thank the Apostle. I want to thank the Apostle for letting us have service here. She has been really great anytime we need something I can call her. Even though sometimes I get fearful when I call her. You need to call her a powerful woman of God. <laughs> She goes, I knew you were going to call anyway. <laughs> or she'll call me and say, Evangelist Robert, it's been four months since you've had a revival. Now you know the doors are open. <laughs> but you know what? I just can't do this no more. I just, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I just can't do this no more. God won't, God won't understand. I can't preach the word of God no more. I can't do it. I'm so fearful. I just can't do it no more. Nobody cares anymore. I can't do this no more. I can't do this no more. I can't do this no more. I'm so fearful and scared. For our God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For we know that all things work for your good. For them that love me and call according to my purpose. Do not fear my son and my daughter. For I have redeemed you. I have called you on by name. For a perfect love has covered all fear. For I am your rock and your fortress and your deliverer. Again I say, do not fear, for I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I love you, my son, and I love you, my daughter. Oh, he is alive. 
sometimes a little fear comes out. Fear, I know you. You are in your true form. You're not as big as you look. Get out of here now in the name of Jesus. You better run, boy. You better run. You better go. You better go.
But don't let your enemy overtake you. You see, when you're not, oh, this is not even in there, but I'm going to you. When you're not nice to your enemies, it's like keeping cold upon their heads. You wonder why they get so mad when you say, hey, how you doing? That's because you put a fire and the Holy Ghost will say, okay, we'll heat some coal. Keep on being mad. You better get glad in the same pants you got mad in. And verse 13, he goes on to say how from this time onward he had moment longings of the soul after God in Christ. When he come in a little too soon, but when fear returns, you seek the Lord by redirecting your focus to the Lord in a heartfelt prayer. Yeah. I promise you, you keep fear out of your life. He's going to come back. He is the number one tool the devil uses in a Christian's walk to make you fearful. He makes you fearful. Evangelist, evangelist in the house, ministers in the house, he makes you fearful to go do something out of the box. He makes you fearful to start a ministry because you're going to fall flat on your face. But guess what? Perseverance, I have a sign on my door that says, Perseverance, my greatest glory does not set in the times I fall, but the times I rise again. Yeah. So let me tell you, if you start a ministry, of course, with apostles' approval, keep on trying. Yeah. If it don't work one way, try another way. Yeah. If it don't work that way, go back and say, okay, what worked in this ministry? Let's do this. Well, I'm fearful. No, God, I'm not fearful no more because you're with me. So let me do this. Yeah. Continue seeking the Lord by continuing referring your faith in Him. Yeah. You notice I said, I know who I am because I'm a child of God. I'm a born again believer. I have royal blood that flows through my veins. My, my surname may be Robert Roberts, but I am King Robert. Oh, what? What? I am priest from her. Why? Because my royal father is priesthood. All right, all right. I don't got time for sonship and kingship tonight. That's a whole different sermon for a whole different day. Oh my. As I you gotta remember it's a simple formula just to pray and seek God for advice. I promise you, no sleep when I told him I was gonna do this, but oh. Apostle's gonna be mad at us. Well, she's just going to I'm just going to ask forgiveness. I'm doing what God told me to do. And I asked her, I said, Do you trust me? She goes, Yeah, I trust you. You wouldn't be here. I said, You know I'm out of the box, right? She goes, Okay. I said, Just do what God tells you to do. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. And I ain't going to talk about the person that was really fearful, but he's right there, you know. You can't let fear overtake you in your life. Let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, uh, can, I, can I give a testimony for a second? So, so, so when I was at Walmart, God said, leave, or you're going to lose your family. My wife thought I was cheating on her, because I was always working, I mean like 70 to 90, 100 hours a week. I would go in at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'd get off to 1 or 2 at night. And I was taking some time for my family. I was missing stuff. Matthew was growing up. Met Brianna and Alex was growing up. And I was missing stuff. Then I got it. And then one day it just clicked. They, they, all of a sudden, within three months, I got wrote up three times. I haven't been wrote up in seven years. And I was like, God, are you telling me something? And so I went outside and I called my boss. I said, honey, what do you want me to do? She goes, I already told you to quit. I said, but we don't have money. And then God said, hey, would you rather jump off the boat knowing you got me as a life preserver or would you rather push you off the boat? And I said, okay, God. So I walk in there to take my keys, my wall key, my badge and say, I do not serve you no more. I do not serve Walmart on the road, but I serve God. You will not let me go to church. You're taking time away from my family. I cannot do this no more. I walked out. They come back and got me before I even got in my truck. I said, come here, let me talk to you. No, it's too late now. Y'all rolled me up three times in one month for nothing. For something for me to be in a pocket because I always said yes. I walked away from a $45,000 job. My nothing. Because God told me to. Don't tell me I wasn't fearful when I did because I was. But he kept me. I mean, you hear what I said? I said he kept me. I 
down my income tax today, I made $44,000 only working four days a week. All right. Less than 40 hours a week. Right. Time to do ministry, time to do stuff. I mean, college, going to college. That was one of the stipulations I told her. I said, I'm not going until I go back to finish what God told me I was going to finish. And then the people told me I would never get a degree in psychology because I'm dyslexic. Because wow. it's a lot of reading and a lot of writing. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology. The celebration was here. Now I'm in master's school halfway through it. For marriage and family therapy. That's all right. And I will be a wonderful therapist. Because my father is a wonderful counselor. My father is a wonderful counselor. I will not fear no more. Fear you can get out and everybody right now. I want you to say fear. Fear. Leave. Leave. Be right now.